Hello guys today in this video, we're going to help you to find out the best MMO mouse in market. I made this list based on my personal opinion, and I tried to list them based on their quality, durability, customer review and more. If you want to see their price and find out more information about them, you can check our links in the description below. Razer Basilisk V3 The Razer Basilisk V3 is the best gaming mouse to hit our lab. It's 9, 13 if you include all the scroll wheel inputs, programmable buttons, well-crafted shape, and premium, textured finish make it versatile across gaming genres and even productivity workloads. While it is on the heavier side compared to ultra-lightweight mice for FPS games, it glides well and has a dedicated sniper button that's easy to reach and drops DPI instantly for headshots. Customization options abound. From the 11 individual RGB zones to the aforementioned buttons, each button can also have a secondary function via Razer's Hypershift. The Basilisk V3 has a dual-mode scroll wheel that can swap from tactile to smooth, free scroll at the tap of a button or based on how you flick it. However, this does mean the wheel can sound rattly, and it's particularly noisy when switching modes. Razer Dead Hatter V3 Pro Razer's Dead Hatter V3 Pro sports a subtle but significant redesign that makes it lighter, more tactile, and more ergonomic than its predecessor, the Dead Hatter V2 Pro. The new V3 Pro weighs just 2.22 ounces, 63G, and features a streamlined silhouette with a split key cover design, instead of the usual unibody shell, and five programmable buttons. To get the weight down, Razer strapped the V3 Pro of unnecessary frills, including RGB and Bluetooth. The Dead Hatter V3 Pro may not be as flashy as other gaming mice, but it has plenty of features packed under its ultra-lightweight hood. The mouse is equipped with Razer's Focus Pro 30K optical sensor, which has a max sensitivity of 30, 0 dpi, a tracking speed of 750 ips, and up to 70 grams off acceleration. The sensor tracks seamlessly on a variety of surfaces, including transparent glass. The V3 Pro comes with a Razer Hyperspeed 2, Redragon M686 Vampire Elite. You might not have heard of Redragon before, but we're getting more and more acquainted with the Chinese company, which is also on our best wireless keyboards page. The affordable, well-built M686 Vampire Elite is currently just $36 and carries many hallmarks of a premium wireless gaming mouse. That includes 8 buttons you can program, including with macros and fast USB-C charging. Redragon claims just 5.5 hours to a full charge via its 5.9-foot braided cable. If you're a gamer whose budget tops out at $50, this may be the best wireless mouse for you. In a rare move, Redragon included grooves for righties to rest their ring and pinky fingers on this mouse. Many mice neglect those digits, leaving them dragging on the mouse pad. The M686's shape comfortably served my long hands, plus another person's larger hands, and also accommodates wide grips. Logitech G502X Plus The Logitech G502X Plus is the successor to the Logitech G502 Light Speed. And while it retains the overall shape of its predecessor, it sports a moderate redesign that's less aggressive, less angular, and features a very pretty 8's own RGB light strip that will look fantastic on your desk. The G502X Plus also has some internal upgrades, including Logitech's latest Hero 25K sensor, which has a maximum DPI of 25,600 a maximum speed of 400 IPS, and can handle up to 40 Gs of acceleration. It also features the brand's new Light Force switches, which are hybrid optical mechanical switches designed to have the speed and durability of optical switches and the tactility and feel of mechanical switches. Logitech G Pro Wireless The Logitech G Pro Wireless is about as premium as gaming mice get with one of the most comfortable designs available. It's ambidextrous, with a pleasantly soft, matte plastic shell that'll please both left and right hands for hours. The coating helps your grip, with its light, 1mm shell making it feel easy to control without making it feel cheap. The lightweight combined with the PDFE feet help it move around with easy control. Logitech's Hero 16K sensor goes up to a whopping 16,000 DPI, or 25,600 via software. 450 IPS and 4EG. 
Logitech also claims it eats less battery than sensors like the Pixart PMW3366. The vendor says the mouse will last up to 48 hours with RGB lighting on and 60 hours without the flash after about 30 hours with the mouse on, with both RGB on and off. We didn't even make a dent in its battery life meter. Logitech G Pro X Super Lite 2. It's hard to beat a classic, so Logitech didn't even try. The Logitech G Pro X Super Lite 2 is practically identical to the original Logitech Pro X Super Lite, at least in form factor, but it brings some convenient upgrades to the table. These include USB-C charging, which the original probably should have had, frankly, an upgraded sensor, new switches, and longer battery life. The Prolix Super Lite 2 upgrades to Logitech's Hero 2 sensor, which has a maximum sensitivity of 32, 0 dpi and a maximum speed of 500 ips, and can handle up to 40 g's of acceleration. It also gets up to a 2000 Hz bowling rate. While the standard 1000 Hz bowling rate will suit most gamers, Higher polling rates seem to make the most difference in competitive sports gaming, and the Proix Super Lite 2 couldn't really be the best FPS gaming mouse without at least trying to appeal to competitors at the highest level. Razer Dead Hatter V2 The Razer Dead Hatter V2 improves on everything we love about the Dead Hatter Elite, itself one of the best gaming mice, and one that has been around since 2016 in various forms. You can pick up the improved Dead Hatter V3 nowadays, but we're still fans of the older kit as it's just so darn cheap right now. Someday they'll change. Yet for now we're betting on a better value buy. The most obvious improvement with the V2 over the original Dead Hatter is the Focus Plus optical sensor, the same one used in the excellent Razer Viper Ultimate Wireless. I'll go into it in a second, but I was more impressed by the more subtle changes Razer has made for the V2. The first is the scroll wheel. Razer has a ridiculous name for the new design, instinctive scroll wheel tactility, but the results are perfect. It's exactly the right tightness. It spins smoothly, but you can still feel every notch of the turn, so you won't accidentally scroll too many times. 